We actually drove by the area where our personnel had been working and uh, Tomorrow marks 25 years since ValueJet Flight 592 crashed in the Everglades, killing all on board. Lives were forever changed that day, and the pain of their tragic day remains. We will always remember tonight. NBC6's Willard Shepard takes us back with those who lived through it. When Willie Alvarez walks through the memorial for the 110 people killed in the ValueJet crash, it's like... He never left. It's a trauma that I think we all carry. The former Miami-Dade firefighter vividly remembers the moment first responders halted their work. They were standing at attention as the families drove by, paying their respects. And what I hope to do this May 11th on the 25th anniversary was once again have our people come out here and pay our respects for the families. Early evening, May 11th, 1996. We were live on TV. Okay, Michael, before you leave us, we see the uh, two helicopters there. Ari Odzer confirming the worst fears. Fire officials are telling us there are no signs of survivors. The plane took off from Miami to Atlanta, but about 10 minutes later, it plunged into the Everglades after oxygen canisters ignited a fire in the cargo bay. It's depressing when you realize there were 110 people on that airplane and their lives just ended. Mike Gast and Danny Yano were police divers. My uh, first impression was how sad the whole circumstance was. These photos show the search to find anything that could be given to families. Well, the tough things were some of the items um, found um, uh, teddy bear and things like things like that and that's what that made it tough. We lost four of our searchers because the minute they saw that teddy bear sitting out there in the crash site they just you know I'm done I'm not gonna do this anymore. Joyce Rilla Braswell Simonton was on board heading back home to Atlanta. We were all at her home Simonton's granddaughter, Christian Grissom, remembers the moment her dad got the devastating news on the phone. And I remember my dad tossing the phone across the room, and, and that's how I knew, as a little seven-year-old little girl, that something bad had happened. My mom was a wonderful lady. Simonton's son says he was able to recover her pocketbook and her clothes. It's something different to deal with when you don't actually have a body. Willie Alvarez was with the families when first responders paid their respects. We actually drove by the area where our personnel had been working and uh, <sighs> a moment this son still remembers 25 years later. And to see the rescue workers and the first responders, the way they treated us, that was, that just took it away from us. To see how much they actually cared. We reached out to the then husband of the female captain flying the aircraft. He sent a message through a friend saying on the 25th anniversary, it was simply too difficult to go back and relive what happened here behind me. And he chose not to speak to us. In the Florida Everglades, Willard Shepard, NBC6 News.